Hi, this is Scott Marshburn with eCabinets Tips and Tricks. Today I'm going to do a follow-up video on the video where I showed you how you could add new drawer slides to your hardware database and then associate those drawer slides to your drawer box. In that video, I was asked a question on how to go about getting the actual holes or hole patterns for those slides on the drawer box and the cabinet. In order to do that, you need to have a hole pattern. Today I'm going to show you how to make a custom hole pattern. So we need to go into the hardware hole editor. So when I click on my hardware hole editor icon right here, it takes me right into the hardware hole editor. Now, we're dealing with drawer slides, so all our geometry needs to be in this quadrant right here. Think of this y-axis line as the front of your drawer slide and this x-axis line as the bottom of your drawer slide. Now, I'm going to be using a hypothetical drawer slide here. Let's say, for example, it's an inch and a half high, 22 inches long, and my holes need to be centered in the y-axis in the center of that drawer slide. So that means I need to be three-quarters of an inch up in the y-axis right here in the positive direction, and all my holes need to be in the positive direction on the x-axis. So the first thing I want to do is set my depth, okay? We're going to be putting the holes in the actual cabinet end first. So I need a negative depth right here. And I'm just going to be using one quarter of an inch for demonstration purposes. Obviously, you're going to be putting it whatever depth you need to for whatever slide you're using. I'm going to click on my circle tool right here. And now I can enter the X and Y distances. So let's say in the X direction right here, I want my first hole to be one inch from the front of my slide. So I'm just going to type 1, hit my tab key, and now in the Y direction, I want that to be 3 quarters up. Hit enter, and now I can enter my diameter, and for this example, I'm going to be using 1 quarter of an inch diameter. I'm going to hit enter, and there's my hole. Now let's say my next hole needs to be in the center of that slide. So right here in the X, I'm going to type in 11, tab, and 3 quarters, and enter, and then 1 quarter and enter. So there's that one. And now let's say my last one needs to be 21 inches from the front of my drawer, drawer slide. I'm going to type 21, tab, and 3 quarters. And enter. And my diameter, 1 quarter, and enter. And hit my home key. And there's our holes. Now we could look at these holes in 3D by clicking on this icon right here. And I can hold down my shift key and rotate it. And you can see all our holes are going down into our actual end. Now the next holes I want to put in here are for the actual drawer sides. And all those need to be in the positive direction. So I'm going to change my negative depth there to zero and my positive depth to one quarter. Click on my circle tool and let's say my first hole in my drawer box side needs to be an inch and a half from the front of my slide. So I'm going to type inch and a half and three quarters. Enter and type the diameter for that hole and enter. So there's that one. Now let's say that the next hole needs to be in the exact same location as this one. I can select my select tool, double click on that hole pattern and change my positive depth from zero to one quarter. Hit enter, escape, and now if we look at this in 3D we can see that we've got a hole going in both directions. Okay, this hole right here is always going to be on your drawer box side, no matter where it is in the cabinet, as far as distance from your end or your partition. Now our last hole, let's say we want to be 18 inches from the front of our drawer slide. I'm going to make sure that I've got my negative depth set back to zero before I select my circle tool and type, it, type 18 in the X and 3 quarters in the Y. Hit enter, and my diameter, and enter. So we've got all our holes in here. Um, let's double check and make sure that we don't have anything odd going on. All that looks good. What we need to do now is just save it. So click Save, and you should be in your Patterns folder. If you're not, make sure you're in your Patterns folder. If you downloaded eCabinets for the very first time, the only folder you will have in here is the Standard folder. I've created a new folder called My Whole Patterns. I'll 
I've already got this hole pattern in here. So we got our hole pattern. Let's go ahead and get it on the actual drawer box and cabinet. I'm going to go back into the cabinet editor. I'm going to go into my drawer box editor. Select a drawer box. Select my opening, add a drawer box. And I'm going to just set my back inset to be 3 inches. My bottom inset, I'm going to leave it 0 for now. Front inset 0, right inset, I'm going to set that to be 13 just so we can see our holes easier. My left inset, I'm going to leave, I'm going to make it 1 half. And right here you see slide distance from bottom. What this allows you to do is move that drawer slide up or down on your drawer box itself. So let's say for example you're putting this whole pattern in a face frame cabinet and you want the runners to set flush on your bottom rail or your mid rail but you want your drawer box to be up one quarter of an inch. What you could do is you could set this slide distance from bottom here to be a negative one quarter of an inch and what that's going to do is move that drawer slide down on your drawer box one quarter of an inch or the whole pattern okay so that whenever you get your runners installed on your cabinet and your runners installed on your drawer boxes and you put that drawer box in there bottom of that drawer box is going to be held one quarter of an inch up now let's um, say for example you do the set you use this bottom inset here well if you set the bottom inset for your actual drawer box to be up one quarter of an inch and you're using a face frame cabinet then you're going to have to raise those runners up one quarter of an inch off your bottom rail or your mid rail so just keep that in mind another thing i want to point out if you are using a face frame cabinet and you've got the hole pattern that's supposed to go in your ends or on your ends or partition it's not going to put that hole pattern on your ends or your partitions if you're using a face frame cabinet and that's because your drawer box is not associated to the actual sides or partitions it's associated to your face frame opening another thing you want to be aware of too let's say for example you're putting rollouts in your cabinet or drawer boxes that actually go behind the doors and you're insetting the left and right of those drawer boxes to accommodate for your hinges to clear your hinges and you're putting spacers in there if you have the whole pattern laid out just like we done it's still going to put those holes in the sides of your cabinets if you're using a frameless cabinet so just be aware of that you may want to set up a whole pattern for rollouts and a whole pattern for actual drawer boxes now we need to get the whole pattern in them I'm going to select my drawer box and come over here. One thing you want to be aware of is that your hole pattern is not associated to your drawer box slide. So just because you associate a slide to your drawer box, it's not going to drill the holes in there. You have to select your hole pattern. And that being said, you don't have to have a drawer slide associated to your drawer box just to put a hole pattern in there. You could put just a hole pattern if you want to. So I'm going to click on Not Set and come in here and find my hole pattern right there click OK and yes let's go back to main and there's our holes right there let's see what they look like on the end there they are so that's going to wrap it up for this video I hope this video helped you out if it did how about give me a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my channel make sure you subscribe so you can get all my latest tips and tricks as always thank you for watching and have a good day